Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. I wonder what would make you happier? We are surrounded by advertising, whether it's the really kind of obvious stuff like the billboards as we walk down the road, the adverts on telly uh, or in our magazines or newspapers, or the more kind of subtle messaging we get from the, the programmes we watch and the things we read and the conversations we're having. We're bombarded by messages trying to sell us stuff. And the fundamental premise of most advertising is that we need to have the thing, otherwise we're going to be missing out in some way. You know, there's very few adverts that actually advertise on the, you know, the basis of, of a good product, of you know, a genuine solution to something. Most of it is, is trying to sell us this lie that we are missing out if we don't have this thing or that thing. That somehow there is more joy and happiness to be had if only we would part with a few pounds and make that purchase. And so we're surrounded by these messages all the time. And, and we're kind of we're shaped by that, this whole consumerist mentality that we have to keep on buying more. We have to keep up in order to be happy. Now, what would make you happier? Would it be a new phone, a, a nicer house? a better car, a new pair of shoes or an outfit. These are the kinds of messages we can so easily buy into. And, you know, I, I try to avoid watching adverts as much as I possibly can, uh, because I know that whilst I feel content with what I have, and I'm aware I have a great deal, whilst I, I think I'm content, the moment I walk through the shops or start kind of tuning into to advertising, suddenly I find myself wanting stuff that I know I don't need. But it kind of stirs up this kind of consumerist longing within me. There's this verse in 1 Timothy 6 where Paul is writing to, to Timothy. And he says this, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. What would make us happier? Well, I'd suggest from these verses that actually being content with what we have is the route to happiness. Not wanting more and constantly looking for the next purchase or the, the new phone or whatever it might be but choosing to be content with what we have. Now, I'm really aware I'm saying this in the context of a, a cost of living crisis. Many of us are feeling the pinch, and especially as we look towards the colder months and the, you know, the heating bills that we're none of us looking forward to. You know, many people are already choosing, can we, can we heat our home? Can we put food on the table? Those are real struggles. I, I don't want to uh, be blind to that. And yet the truth remains, we are among the richest people. If we live in the UK, we're among the richest people on the planet right now. And we're also among the richest people ever to have lived and walked the earth. We have a great deal. And so will we be content with the things we do have. Sure, there are big issues that we need to wrestle with in the coming months, but even within that, can we learn to be those who model contentment with what we have? That those around us might look to us and say, well, how are you, how are you doing so well at getting through this tough season? Well, it's because we're choosing to be content with what we have. Godliness with contentment is great gain. What words to hold on to as we go through these coming months. So happiness is not so much about having what we want as, as wanting what we have. Choosing to be content. We already have everything we need for godliness and salvation. When uh, God brought his people in the, uh, in the Old Testament, brought his people out of slavery uh, and into the, the promised land, there was this long journey they went on uh, to get there. And along the way, God guided them uh, each step of the way and provided for them the things they needed. He provided food um, day by day 
uh, water from the rock and so on. And so God miraculously provided the things they needed, enough for each day. And yet what did they do? Before too long, their complaint was this. There's not enough. There's not enough. We'd have been better off back where we were before. There isn't enough. And they they stopped trusting that God was providing enough for their needs. And we, in the same kind of way, attempted to do that. We get used to a certain um, kind of way of, of living, a certain standard of life. And and we can be so tempted to, to take that for granted and to start complaining that God hasn't given us enough. Instead of being content, we we long for more and more. And we start to say, God isn't enough. And we go into that mode of, of complaining about what we don't have rather than choosing gratefulness, thankfulness, contentment with all the many things that God has provided. So I don't know where, where you're at right now. Uh, I know that things are, are tough and we're, we're really happy to talk and, and support and pray with anyone who, uh, who's finding things difficult right now. Please do let us know if that's your situation. But wherever we're at, whether we feel like we have, whether we feel like we have enough or whether we're really struggling, godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's choose to be content. Let's choose to be content. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our provider. That we can trust in you, that we can call out to you each day for our daily bread. So I pray that you will help us to be content with the things that, that we have. That if we have food and clothing... And shelter that Lord we will choose to be content with that and Lord I do pray for for those who already are struggling you know between those things whether they whether they can have food or clothing food or heating uh, their space God that you would yeah that you would bless them abundantly that you would help us to support one another and that you would work through uh, through our government and, and all those involved in policy making to, to come up with solutions to this cost of living crisis. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.